Hi guys, my name is Sabine and welcome to another video. Today I'm here with my July wrap up and kind of August TBR slash currently reading. <laughs> First of all, if I'm uploading this video before August 9th, please go check out my 10k celebration video. It's somewhere here up on the screen. In that video, I am talking about a giveaway that I'm hosting and you can enter that up until August 9th until midnight. So please go do that if you're interested in winning a book of choice up until 10 euros. I also reacted to my first booktube video and I did a little Q&A session because it is so amazing and wonderful that I have reached 10k on my channel. This year has been insane and I just wanted to say thank you. So go check out that video to see all of that. But today I am here to show you guys the three books that I finished in July and definitely the three books that I'm planning on reading in August. I'm hoping to finish more books than that because I just want to read more but until so far that hasn't really happened yet. So I'd say let's just get into it and share my thoughts and opinions about these books. The first book that I want to talk talk about is Daughter of the Burning City by Amanda Foodie. You guys can check out my reading vlog in which I talk about this book like in depth and you see my life reactions and my experience while reading this book. So this is a standalone murder mystery fantasy novel and if that does not intrigue you already like what else does? <laughs> I received this book in my fairy loot box somewhere in 2017 so I have had this book on my shelves for a little while right now and I just just didn't know in what type of reading mood I was so I was kind of just checking out some chapters of some very different books and then I stumbled upon this one on my shelves and I was like why not pick it up the main premise that intrigued me so much was that this was like a fantasy world with a traveling circus so we follow our main character I believe her name you pronounce it as Serena or Serena like this is her name I don't know how to pronounce it, <laughs> but she can create illusions and no one else really can do this in this traveling circus and her illusions like look, feel, smell real. It's all so intensely realistic and she has kind of created this whole magical freak family. Her and her created illusions family, they do a freak show in this traveling circus and eventually one of her illusions gets killed, which should not be possible because it's an illusion. It's not like a real thing. It's not a real person. Her illusions get killed off one by one and like how can this happen? How is that possible? That is the main thing of this story and I just went into this book without any expectations and oh boy I actually really enjoyed it. It had not an amazing rating on Goodreach which is really stupid but this happens to me all the time. Whenever a book has less than a 3.8 out of 5 stars on Goodreads I'm already kind of like how will this be? I don't know if I will enjoy it that much. That's a shame because everyone has their own opinion and my opinion is apparently super influenced by a Goodreads rating, which is just stupid. It was a little difficult to get into this book. Not really difficult, but the first 50 pages you really get introduced to Serena, Serena's family of freaks and it is a little bit of an info dump, not too bad. And after those 50 pages, the story intrigued me a little more and I just kept on reading. So this is Amanda Foodie's debut novel. Since this book she has written two or three more novels in a trilogy. You can definitely kind of notice that this is her first novel but I think for a debut that this is a very solid book. I really enjoyed her writing style. It was a bit more on the slower side which I'm usually not a fan of but with this book it intrigued me a lot and her characters surprisingly were super diverse. They all had different skin colors but also lots of different sexualities and some sexualities were represented in this book, specifically demisexuality that I haven't seen in a book before which was really great. The people in this book were like bisexual or lesbian or demisexual and they were that. Like there was no other like discussion around it. That's just who they were and that is really nice and refreshing to see in YA books. The Traveling Circus intrigued me very much much. The magical system is not really super clearly explained but that didn't necessarily bother me and the murder mystery was intriguing. 
I didn't really expect the ending of this book. So overall, really a surprising read. And if you have this book on your shelves and it has been standing there for a little while, just like with me, pick it up and I hope that you will be pleasantly surprised like I was as well. So I think I gave this one a three and a half to a 3.75 out of five stars because I really enjoyed it. Next up, I read Clap When You Land by Elizabeth Acevedo and this book was so good. I don't know if this is my favorite of the month because I read a really good book after this one as well, but it was amazing. It's definitely one of my new favorite books of 2020. So in this story, we'll follow two girls. I have to think about their names again. Yahaira and Camino. Camino and Yahaira have the same father and they didn't know about this until their father died in a plane crash and this book is based upon a real plane crash that happened I believe a couple of months after 9-11 and that flight was gonna go from JFK to a city in La República Dominica <laughs> so like the Dominican Republic basically these two sisters Yahaira and Camino find out that they are sisters that they are related by blood and it is very intense the two girls grew up in very different types of environments. I always need to think about who grew up where exactly. Camino lives in the Dominican Republic and Yahaira is in New York and the two girls meet and they kind of share their grief so that is definitely a big part of the plot like grief and dealing with that but also the environment in which you grew up and that was very interesting. I also love the Spanish language and I've definitely learned a couple of new Spanish words from this book. This is also so written in verse. I don't know if you guys can kind of see it, but I was reading it and listening to the audiobook simultaneously at the same time and it was highly enjoyable and not only enjoyable, it was really touching and Elizabeth Acevedo is like just a mastermind. She is amazing and I desperately want to read her other book which is written in prose which is called With the Fire on High because I think Elizabeth Acevedo is like an amazing writer and I need to read all of her books. So definitely go pick this book up if you can. It is wonderful not only from the outside but also the inside is really pretty. <laughs> so definitely five out of five stars for this one. And then the last book that I finished in July. Yes, I only read three books. I'm a very slow reader. I'm not one of those booktubers who reads like 15 books per month. I wish but it's just, it's not gonna happen with me, probably ever. And that's totally fine. The last book that I read in July is the July and August pick for the book club that I'm co-hosting together with Leonie from the book Leo. She is one of my very good friends here on booktube, but also in real life, like she's a sweetheart and so kind. We have started the World Readers Book Club. You guys can follow us on Twitter. And our July and August pick was The Poppy War by RF Quang. Quang, I'm really sorry if I mispronounce any names and holy shit. <laughs> to be honest, when this was picked for our July and August like read for the book club because we did a poll on Twitter, you guys could vote on that and also clap when you land was an option for that as well. But the Poppy War won like ugh, by an inch. There was such a small difference and I was a little disappointed because I had zero interest in reading this book. I'm so glad though, <laughs> because this is one of my most favorite reads of 2020 right now. And I never expected to say that before our book club happened. Even though this is supposed to be one of the best adult fantasy debut releases of 2018, Apparently I lived under a rock because I hadn't heard of this book before March of this year. I read it and um, pfft, my mind is blown. It was so incredibly good. This book kept me on the edge of my seat at the end of every single chapter. Like, oh my god. <laughs> and now I'm so glad that I can talk with more people about this book when we do the live show, which we will be doing, I believe, on Sunday the 30th of August, if I'm saying it correctly. Okay, stop fangirling Sabine and actually kind of tell what this book is about. That's also nice to know, I guess. So this is book one in an adult fantasy trilogy inspired by Chinese history, I believe somewhere in the 20th century and the Opium Wars. That is all I kind of knew before getting into this book, but let's elaborate a little bit more on that plot premise. So our main character is called Rin and she has been training for this really important test called the Keiju. Keiju? Keiju? pronunciation struggles, which is a test for the most talented like scholars in her country called Nikara. And if you get through, you will be attending the most elite military school of Sinigard. Now, 
a big surprise. She gets in. This happens rather quickly in the book, so it's not really a spoiler. It's also mentioned on the back of this book. Her country, Nakara, has been in two really big wars called the Poppy War, and there is kind of like danger looming over this whole country for possibly a third poppy war. Now Rin gets into the Synagard school and she will kind of learn how the military works and how the gods in this like fantasy world work as well. She gets trained by a really crazy kind of like professor, a master, and that's all I'm gonna say. I don't know if this is selling the premise of this story to you, but believe me when I say that this is an amazing book. That means a lot, I think, coming from my mouth because I always get really intimidated um, by adult fantasy books and especially chunky ones. This one is a 530 page book, which I believe is quite a chunky novel. It is kind of separated into three parts. So part one is more of like her attending the military school and then starting from part two on, it gets a lot more political and a lot more fantasy-ish, if I can say it like that. And I've heard from so many people that you either like part one or part two more than the other. And I don't know how I feel about part one versus part two. I can tell you though that this book has major Avatar The Last Airbender vibes. Sometimes I also got a little bit of Mulan vibes from this book as well. Amazing! That's all I can say. I don't know how to convince you to pick up this book if it has been on your TBR for a long time. It is amazing. I also have the sequel and I will show you how intimidatingly big it is. Okay, so this is book one. And this is book two. Like, do you see how big book two is? That's insane. The Dragon Republic. It is only like 110 pages longer than this one or something. So I don't know why they make it look so intimidatingly big, but I cannot wait to continue on with the series. But <clears throat> pick this book up. Like, please do it. It's amazing. Okay, calm the titties, Sabine. <laughs> Let's go on to the three books that I'm definitely planning on finishing in July. So I'm very shameful to say that I'm still currently reading White Fragility by Rama D'Angelo. I am noticing that I'm completely forgetting that I have this book on my phone and that is the only way that I can read it right now. So I only need to read just a small portion of it. So gotta finish this book ASAP so that I can continue on reading more nonfiction books about racism. So definitely gonna finish it this month. Like if I don't, you guys have to like slap me in the face somehow. That's not really possible. Shame me please on my booktube if I don't do it. And the other two books that I'm definitely gonna to read is first of all Loveless by Ellis Oseman. Ellis Oseman has become one of my favorite authors ever ever since I read Radio Silence by her this year. I have fallen in love with her, her work, her characters, just everything about her. <laughs> and this is her most recent release. So in Loveless we follow our main character Georgia who is asexual. My camera's dying. Shit. <laughs> and that is kind of like what is going to be explored in this book. She is also going to university so I'm hoping that that will be a main theme in this book as well and I cannot imagine anything but loving this book. But I'm like 50 pages in right now and I'm already like loving it again. Ellis Oseman's writing style is really easy to get into. It's very funny and you immediately kind of feel a certain connection to the characters or at least I do. And then last but definitely not least, the other book that I will be picking up in ju in July, I was gonna say, in August is A Darker Shade of Magic by V.E. Schwab. I am currently hosting a read-along for this whole trilogy together with Jasmine from Jasmine the Reader and in August we are gonna read book number one. Continuing on to October to finish reading this whole trilogy, I have read this book previously but I just need a little push in the back to continue on with this trilogy and finish it. It was one of my goals for this year in 2020 so need to stick to it and Jasmine is gonna keep me to my promise as well and this is a fantasy book all about parallel Londons and certain Londons do have magic others don't and some Londons have just completely fallen apart and I remember loving this first book in this series and I just need to refresh my mind and then continue on with it and I'm so excited that I will be doing that with Jasmine and you guys as well so these were the six books that I wanted to talk about in my July 
wrap up and kind of August TBR. Let me know in the comments down below what you have read this past month and what your thoughts were. Maybe you have some opinions and thoughts on the books that I just showed to you guys. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking somewhere here on the screen or on the button down below. You guys can follow me on all of my different social media pages. Because I'm a booktuber, of course I have Goodreads, but I also have Instagram, Twitter, an email address, and an Etsy, and links to those will be in the description box down below as well. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope that I will see you in the next one. Bye!